Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization and Juggernaut Training Systems talking to you about ab hypertrophy. How do we get our abs big and popping and juicy? Anyway, let's go to the tape. So first, volume. The maintenance volume for abs for most individuals is zero sets of direct ab work per week. Why? Because shoulder presses, squats, bent over rows, deadlifts, even pull-ups, all that stuff requires quite a bit of abdominal activation. And if it's heavy weight actually loaded down onto your spine, it requires a lot of abdominal activation, definitely enough to keep your abs the same size. On that note, minimum effective volume, the least amount of work you have to do to get your abs to grow, is actually zero sets per week, granted that you are training hard in the compound heavy basics. This MEV of zero explains why most IFBB pro bodybuilders don't actually ever do direct ab work. They just don't do it. And they have huge abs, biggest abs in the world. How do they have that? Because they do heavy everything else. Your abs are an unbelievably important core stabilizer. So if your core is stable under 500 pound squats, you're going to have big abs. There's just no way around it. Now, if you want to grow your abs particularly, for example, if you are a male physique competitor and you really want them to pop, not just be there when you're lean, but literally pop out, you want as big of abs as possible, you're going to have to do some work. Maximum adaptive volume around the best range to do with abs, somewhere between 16 and 20 sets a week. You can do up to about 25 sets per week of abs in most cases until you hit your maximum recoverable volume. So if you want to train abs, you could potentially benefit from training quite a bit. But if you just want good sized abs that match the rest of your physique, in most cases, you probably don't have to do anything but a little bit or even zero direct ab work. As far as intensity is concerned, eight to 20 reps per set. There's a reason why we don't do more than 20. It's usually too light to do much hypertrophic stimulus. Anything below eight, and it's hard to actually execute the exercises properly and safely. If you're doing spinal flexion with the really heavy loads, there is some biomechanical reason to think that might not always be super safe. But if you keep it north of eight reps per set, you get enough volume and enough intensity to get your abs grow plenty. And here's the deal, for that real heavy burden, just do heavy squats and deadlifts and your abs will contract in such a way that probably makes them uh, you know, grow from that less than eight reps type of intensity. Exercises. I'm going to re, uh, sort of describe a couple of exercises that I think are a really good idea to use. Now, you can use all the exercises you want, but here's the deal. Machine crunches, right, or you can call them machine sit-ups or whatever, is when you have machines with pads here and here, right, and your feet are secured, usually your knees are secured, maybe even your hips with a seat belt, and you crunch all the way down and stretch all the way back up. The reason I like machine crunches, I almost never recommend machines as a first thing for any muscle, is because they're one of the easiest ones to actually load, progress, and monitor your intensity and volume. For example, regular crunches. People say, just do crunches. Well, how many crunches can you do until you start approaching failure? If you're reasonably well-trained, it's like more than 50. Okay, yeah, that's outside of our 20 reps per set range already. I'm like, you're doing stuff, but it's not very efficient. Machine crunches can allow you to put on some serious weight because the stat goes up to 200 pounds. Now you have a lot of resistance to get that good hypertrophy range. A lot of people, when they start training abs, they start doing planks, holds, super high rep crunches, and then it's kind of like there's some different formula to getting abs bigger, it seems, than every other muscle. Almost every other muscle is somewhere between six or eight to 20 reps per set, good hypertrophy, multiple sets, get strong over time, and then abs seems to not follow those rules. It does follow those rules. People train abs in a bunch of different ways out of convenience because not everyone has the machinery around. Machines are a really good idea for abs because they allow you to do a good concentric motion, full range, eccentric, full range, and use external load and monitor that weight and increase it over time. Slant board sit-ups with added weight when you're ready are a really good idea. Reaching sit-ups when you reach both your feet and your hands lying on the ground, right? Uh, V-ups are very, very similar movement. And uh, modified candlesticks, which are brutal. You can Google those, look them up. Uh, do, you, know, you can do regular candlesticks when you get strong enough. Those are really, really hard movements, but just those basics up top are a really, really good place to start. Of course, you can do your hanging knee raises, hanging straight leg raises, etc. Uh, maybe to get the lower part of the abs or even the hip flexors a little bit. All that's really good. I will say on the hanging knee raises, the proper way to do them is to bring your knees up as far as they'll go, preferably up to close to your chest, 
hold for a second, and then slow and control on the way down. Remember, you're not just doing abs. A lot of times, people will have a mind-muscle connection with biceps, with chest, they really feel it, and the abs will just kind of move around, like doing the funky pigeon, just kind of jerking around. Feel your abs working with abs, and you'll get more out of the movement than you otherwise would have. As far as variation, you can vary exercises, and there are so many exercises for abs that you can vary them for, you know, you can do one for three or four months, change it out, do another three or four months, and you're good to go for a really long time. Of course, loading variation, right? Some of your movements during the week, you'll do sets of eight to 10, some you'll do you know, 12 to 15, some you'll do 16 to 20. So you can always vary the load, and of course, you can vary the range of motion, especially which part of the abs maybe you're targeting with leg raises versus other part. Remember, crunches aren't really a full range of motion. They're somewhat effective, uh, but, but maybe not maximally effective. And also, there's different parts of your abs, which is why range of motion is on there. So for example, if you wanna train more of your obliques, you can do your crunches or sit-ups leaned over to the side a little bit. And obliques have their own training. The reason we don't have a hypertrophy guide for obliques is because this is targeted mostly at folks who wanna get bigger and stronger, but also improve their appearance. Big obliques don't really give you much other than a blockier waist, right? Uh, so usually we just don't train obliques altogether and they get enough training from everything else that they can enhance our health, enhance our safety, enhance our stability to get bigger abs and get bigger everything else. Frequency, the abs can heal pretty quickly, not as quickly as some other muscles, and also you need your abs to be fresh for really compound heavy movements. Three to five days a week is usually good enough. Some folks like to train their abs every day, but usually you'll tend to notice that's planks, that's crunches, really high rep stuff. That's not the most effective way to train abs. If you train abs effectively, three to four days a week is the most most people will be able to do because you need some breaks in there when you're doing compound or you're doing heavy basic machine crunches, you know, five sets of 10 or something like that, actually loaded 10, you're stopping at 10 because everything else is way too hard after that, that's gonna damage your abs quite a bit. It's gonna cause them to grow quite a bit, but it's gonna require a little bit more break between sessions. As far uh, as periodization, uh, just start with moderate uh, weights. Eventually, one or two months later, get into the higher weights, uh, or maybe even some metabolite stuff, drop sets, et cetera, and then give a low volume break to make sure everything resensitizes, and then you can go back into it. Nothing too magical with abs. As far as special metabolite techniques for abs, drop sets work really well. For example, let's say you're on your machine crunch. You start at 100 pounds, do a set of 15, it's really hard, you stop, go to 90, do a set of six, go to 80, do a set of six, no break, it's gonna just just completely destroy your abs. Remember, that kind of stuff doesn't work in the long term, long term, maybe a month or two, and then you have to go back to conventional, normal timed training. You can do supersets. So you can do an ab uh, exercise that's hard, superset it to one that's easier. So for example, what you can do is slant board sit up with weight, and then when you can't do that anymore, you put the weight down and you do slant board sit up without weight. That's a perfectly fine superset. Or you could do a reaching sit up, do as many reaching sit ups as you can, even with weight, right? And then when you can't do those, or you do a set of that, set of 10, one or two reps left in the tank, you put the weight away and you just do crunches. Because you can always do some crunches after whatever. When you fail with crunches, here's a really, uh, if you really want to torture yourself, try this sort of triple superset. As many reaching sit ups as you can do, stop, take a second to breathe, literally one second, <sighs> crunches, as many crunches as you can do. As soon as you're done with crunches, flip over onto your front, do a plank for any number of seconds until you start convulsing violently. People at the gym are worried if you're okay or not. That's a hell of a drop set. Do three or four sets of that. Your abs are well on the way to getting big. The reason I say big is if you wanna keep your waist as streamlined as possible, and if you want your abs just to be there, there's no replacement for diet and probably cardio to make sure you're lean enough. That's number one. But once you're lean, if you want your abs bigger, you can use these tools to get bigger abs so they can pop out more, and you can finally look like you have ravioli on your abdomen. See you next time for the next hypertrophy guide.